to good morning, everyone. I will present you a revision of the trial about genus Lycus. This is a classical work that I hope could show you that old-fashioned paleontology still got something to say. And I will not make a presentation for specialists. I will try to, under, to explain you in a simple way this history. So let's begin with, sorry, let's begin with a quick revision of the taxonomic history of this genus. Uh, a thought type species was first described by Wallenberg in 1818 from the upper division of Sweden. The genus was proposed later in 1827 by Dahlmann, a Swedish naturalist. So it makes part of the oldest trilobite taxa defined ever. It is a classical genus. After this, in the second half of the 19th century, several new species currently assigned to this genus were described first here in the United Kingdom from the upper division Coniston beds and later in America from the Silurian of Illinois and Indiana. And only after this, in the 20th century, uh, Likas was described from southwestern Europe. In 1957, Tripp made the first tentative to organize superfamily Lycoidea. This was a contribution to the 1959 treatise edition. And some decades later, uh, the most detailed and comprehensive study about order Lycida was published by Thomas and Holloway. In 2005, Paul Littell, and again because of the treatise uh, edition, now the revised ver uh, edition, uh, published this first cladistic analysis of some Lycida families. And finally, in the last years, several new data related to Lycas and closed forms uh, was published. So our study detailed not only the bibliographic data, but also new data. And currently, we consider that there are 10 valid species the study allowed the recognition of two new species from Portugal and also to uh, found the oldest records ever of this genus the, from two different outcrops of Portugal that I will show you later. And our new data allowed us to add new information related to the stratigraphical range, to the origin and phylogeny of this genus. So what did we know before this revision? First, all these oldest records, they used to be forgotten in the previous works. First, of course, the oldest record was only found during this work, so it is not known before. Then Lycas Barcai and Lycas Vinacai, <coughs> both from Sardinia, was only were only described on 2007. Uh, these two Portuguese uh, records, thought, uh, I thought they were listed on 1908 and described in 1947. Uh, only Tripp and Tim Yang mentioned them. And uh, after this, Lycas Marocanos, uh, gone on a tissue, thought it was during a long time the oldest uh, defined species. So most of the works focused only on the latest or division Lycus species. That's why people thought that Lycus appeared only on Asheville. And what was thought related to the Lycus origin? Tripp proposed that Lycus evolved from Eurolycus, a South Gondwan, a middle or division uh, genus uh, that lived confined to Iberia, Bohemia, France, and also Morocco with this long pygidial uh, spine. And later, Thomas and Holloway maintained these both genera in the same subfamily, Lycine, but they prefer to directly relate Lycas to Uralicas incola, uh, Bohemian species, because of the lack of a uh, median pygidial spine in the pygidium of Lycas. Haman suggested that Lycas has a Baltic origin and that arrived to South Gondwana domain during the Upper Catian, uh, related to the global warming event, now called the Boda event, that eventually allowed uh, several taxa adapted to tropical settings to extend their geographical distribution to polar latitudes. And finally, Politeal suggested something very different. Lycas appears isolated, constitutes by itself a monogenetic tribe, Lycini, separated from Uralicas and closed forms that constitute the tribe de Carapeltini. And my opinion today is that we should go back to basics and agree with Tripp's interpretation. So let's see all the steps that I took to conclude that. First, if we look to all these oldest records, what a coincidence that all of them are from South Peri Gondwana domain. And besides, during these times, there still is a marked endemism in this domain, the so-called Selenopeltis province, or more recently, the Dalmanitoidean realm. And uh, only after this, in the, um, in the Yernantian and in the uh, latest Catian, there is a decrease of the endemism that uh, reached its maximum right before the, um, the second biggest extinction of the Phanerozoic. Then we found the oldest records of Lycas. 
from the middle Baronian of Portugal, which corresponds to the uppermost Sandian, lowermost Catian. And the first spe specimens came from the north of the country, from a really structurally complex zone from the Chandomiral formation, uh, from some beds that people thought for more than 100 years that were azoic, but they're not. They're full of fossils, but they look like this, so you could carry several ponds of rocks, and luckily you will identify one taxon. We have two specimens from there, but they were so deformed that we need better material to be sure of the generic identity. So, once I realized that Lycos was already present in the uppermost Sandian of Portugal, I instantaneously thought I will look for it in the best fossiliferous preserved beds of this age in Portugal. And the most diverse and the best preserved uh, fossiliferous with trial white beds from uh, not only Portugal, but probably from all South Gondwana domain, it's located in Massão, in central Portugal, uh, from the Queixo Perra member of Cabestupian formation. This is how these beds look like. They're full of fossils with good preservation and many bryozoans, too much bryozoans indeed. And of course I knew that uh, no leakers were uh, scientifically reported from there before, and these beds are known since 1902, so more than 100 years of fossil collection in there. So I, um, there are several collectors from these beds, and I called them because they used to collaborate with me, and wrote emails asking if have they ever seen some fragment in there that could belong to a liquid. All answers were no, uh, and this was on June, but luckily, three months after, in September, uh, later in September, Miguel wrote me with this attached image asking if this could be what I was looking for, and yes, it was. And with this specimen, there is no doubt that Lycus was already present in the uppermost Sandian of Portugal. Fortunately, we only have this cranidium till now. Another coincidence is that all the oldest finite species of Lycus, they bear a small, medium, pygidial spine. And if you look to the stratigraphical trend of this structure, it progressively turns into pointed outline and finally perfectly rounded in the Silurian. So let's look again to Relicus now with this new data. It is hard to say what is the amount of variation that Relicus could support. There are several <coughs> genera proposed, but probably they are all synonyms. And what varies is always the number of pleuri and the uh, distal hand of the pygidium. Anyway, let's look to the youngest definite species of Relicus from Sandbian of Morocco. Uh, it bears a smaller spine compared to the middle or the vision species. So it is highly probable that the little median pygidial spine in Lycus is a plesiomorphic character. So we have a trend of loss of this structure since Eurolycus to Lycus. And finally, let's look to the stratigraphical and geographical distribution of both genera. Eurolycus appears in the Floyan of Morocco and its last occurrence is known from the Sandian of Morocco also and lived confined to the, this area. Uh, but uh, in Perunica, that corresponds to Bohemia, the genus disappears in the lower Darivillian, a premature disappearance, as Robin would call it. And Lycas appeared only in the uppermost Sandman of Portugal and lived <coughs> until the lower Catian only in this domain, but not in Perunica, where Uralicas has disappeared long ago. Of course, this also could be related to fascist fascists. And finally, only in the upper Catian, related to the decrease of endemism, the events, the genus uh, gets widespread to Avalonia, Baltica, Turkey. And finally, let's look to the cladistic analysis of Polit. They used only the Baltic uh, Lika species to code this genus, but if you incorporate the information of the oldest Likas in uh, their matrix, there are several columns, several characters that will change, not only in Likas, but also in Neurolikas. And some of these characters are the nodes that separate these genera, like the presence of a pygidial medium spine or tuberculation on the middle body of hypostone. Uh, characters that are present on Lycus, but these authors consider them uh, absent. And these differences is enough to put this text uh, close in their matrix. And you know, a tree tells you what you put in there. It, is not, it could not incorporate biostatigraphical data, neither uh, geographical distribution. But most important, I uh, would like to show you, so the conclusions are, we found the, um, the oldest records from the uppermost Sambian, so we propose a South Peri Gondwana origin. Uh, we think that it is closely related to Uralicus. It gets widespread in the upper Catian. It is a special genus because it survived the Ordovician Silurian boundary. So I'll go back to the tree interpretation. I will agree with him and say hypostomes don't lie. But most important, remember how all this began? With this fragment from the um, 
uh, uh, outcrop where no one plans to make a paleontological study in there. So I would like to remember you that nature does not select where to put crucial taxa. Neither a trilobite say, bye guys, I'm going further soul because one day this place will be deformed. And the bibliometric times we live make us forget this kind of outcrops. But you only see what is in the puzzle if you have all the pieces, including the ugly ones. And to study geology is trying to understand the entire puzzle with only a few pieces. So do not throw any of them away, please. And thank you.